Go ahead, Lakin. Wait for the mic, please. <coughs> Thank you. Hey, Twyla. Um, what can you tell us about Naomi's um, injury and just the severity of it? Yeah, uh, I'm. She's just getting evaluated for a right thigh injury, and we'll learn more shortly. What else? Go ahead, front row, and then second row. Hey, Twyla. What was it like breaking the record today, the attendance record, and, and what did the squad think of it? Yeah, I mean, the energy in this stadium was unbelievable. The stadium itself is incredible. Um, this is my first time in it, and yeah, I think the fans had a huge part in the game today. You could feel them the entire time. Um, breaking an attendance record, I heard, if you can correct me if this is correct, but incorrect, sorry, but um, I heard this is the biggest crowd that we've had since 99. 99 World Cup Final, yeah. 99 World Cup Final, which is incredible. Um, I think the players deserve, you know, this sort of uh, energy around them. It was incredible. And to, for this to happen, you know, close to, it's our home now. You know, we're moving here to Atlanta, U.S. soccer's home. It's just an incredible thing. And we really feel the support around us. And, and also, this is huge, I think, for our fans to know that to help us replicate the type of environment that you feel in world champions, world championships like World Cups and Olympics is massive and you play a role in helping us grow and develop and make sure we're ready for those big stages. So incredible. Hi, Twyla. First of all, congratulations. Um, just a bit about uh, Jaden Shaw today and of course playing, I guess, more in a midfield role. Mm -hmm. uh, what sort of went into starting her in that position, obviously successfully? Um, can you just talk a bit about that? Thank you. Yeah, Jaden usually plays interior for us. Um, so she inverts as a 7 or 11, and now we have her playing as a 10. Uh, this is something that's really important as we look at, you know, developing a roster for the Olympics and thinking about versatility and things like that. But a made, you know, that we can see and give people experiences in multiple positions um, because that's necessary when you get to those type of events where you only have 16 field players. Uh, but the reintroduction of Mal also created a scenario where uh, it was, I felt like it was the right time against this particular opponent to put Jaden right there in the middle of uh, what we call seam two and allow her to do her thing. And I think she did an exceptional job. And I just want to point out, not only did she score a brilliant goal and not only was she part of a lot of very effective buildup, but she did a great job defensively. And this is an area you know, where she uh, has accepted a challenge and is continuing to grow in and makes a massive difference for our team. Go ahead, wait for the mic. Twilight team, of course, went down 1-0 about the 32nd mark, something you maybe never really planned for. Um, looks like you all didn't get shaky. All came out. Um, the confidence just was still high. How does that speak to the team's resilience and adversity like that? Yeah. I just can't speak any more highly of this group. This is a group that continues to deal with anything that is in front of them. Of course, in a situation like this where you give up a goal in the first 30 seconds, we have a bit to do with that, which you know we'll talk about. But the ability to come back um, and, like you said, keep that level of calmness, and it's, it's an ode to the confidence that we have in the style of play that we're playing, our game plan, all of those, and each other. And I just think they deserve a lot of credit. And I also want to point out that this is a team that's just come off a month-long tournament which had its ups and downs, was very difficult. They went back into their home environments, and uh, it's, the pre it's the beginning of season there where everything's ramped up. They're all super valuable to their clubs, and you know, they're heavily lied upon there, relied upon there. And this is the quickest turnaround we've had between events uh, since I've been here, so this is a very quick turnaround. And these are very formidable opponents. Every team at this event is a very high caliber team. I think Japan is a world-class team, and uh, to do what they did today, especially almost starting the, the game like a goal down essentially is just, it's it's a mark of who they are as people and who they are as a team and what they're willing to do um, to get the job done. What else we got? Any Bulldogs have any questions? Yes, Bulldogs, let's go. Georgia students. Hey, Coach, um, what did you see from Japan in the lead-up to the game or during the game that <coughs> influenced uh, the decision to press? <laughs> so
So Japan, um, I guess I would say that we, oh, we're always looking to be on the front foot. That's why it took me a moment to answer that question. We're always looking to be on the front foot. We, uh, yes, there's times we sit in a block, but um, part of our DNA is to be on the front foot and make sure that we're dictating play and influencing how other teams play and making it difficult to play against us. So uh, yeah, there's, that's just a little bit of who we are. And then the way that they set up, they set up affects a little bit of how we want to take something away from them and we'll make some tactical adjustments. Um, but they were pretty slight adjustments for us compared to what we usually do. Har. Har with Equalizer Soccer. You mentioned the turnaround. How is the team approaching that knowing you have to fly up to Columbus? And do you have a quick thought on potentially playing Canada and perhaps Brazil? Yeah, I think uh, actually when I was referring to turnaround, I meant just the time between camps. And this this cadence is actually pretty normal for us. It's not you, we don't normally play normally play games. Excuse me. At this time of the day, so we're actually going to steal a few hours, which is very help helpful for us. Um, yeah, and then we'll go back to the hotel, get ourselves situated, make sure we're well fed and ready to get on a plane. And uh, some of my staff members will stay and watch this game, and the rest of us will work on the review. We'll put it all together, and the team will just stick on its stay on its regular cadence. I think anytime you play uh, opponents that you've just recently played, that puts a different dynamic on the game. Obviously, the Canada game. Uh, was a very unique situation, and hopefully we're never in a situation like that again. Um, so that would be interesting to play them under a different context. And uh, you know, Brazil obviously was a very back and forth, uh, and I would say transitional game. Um, but perhaps it would be a little bit different. I know one of the things that we challenged ourselves on is to make sure that we're connecting the first passes as soon as we've won the ball and able to settle the ball a little bit more in those transitional moments. And uh, I think we did an exceptional job of that today. And ideally, if we do get Brazil, you know, that's something that we would continue to look to do. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, from our Cincinnati station, Roosevelt um, not making the roster today because of an injury. We know she's a leader on the team. Um, just what's the impact of not having her today and um, how's she doing? Uh, she's doing well. She's she's working on everything she needs to in her home environment. I got a text from her today, you know, saying good luck. And uh, that's the type of person Rose is. She's not self-focused. She's always focused on others. I, I don't pry, but I imagine if I got that text that several of her teammates did, if not everybody. Um, yeah, and anytime you're missing somebody in this environment, it's felt everybody is unique and, and valuable and... Um, important to this group. So that's always a change, but this is also a group that is used to people coming in and out of camps for various reasons, and uh, we're doing just fine. Yeah, she didn't text me today. Back row. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you mentioned the crowd, and just what was it like getting to watch Emily play in front of her home crowd? Yeah, that's uh, that's gotta be really special for a player to, anytime you go into your home market and it's probably a bit of a full circle moment. Uh, I'll have to have a chat with her about that and just enjoy that conversation. Um, that is something cool to point out that I'm sure she is really excited about that. I would just say for all of us, I mean, it felt like home to all of us. And that that is one thing I wanna make sure this crowd here is like, it felt like home to all of us. Even, even the non-reaction from the Japan goal helped us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Every step of the way, this group, this crowd was incredible, and uh, my neck was hurting looking up to the, see how far it went up and how many people were up there, which was just incredible. And I also want to point this out. You know, sometimes you to go to crowds and it's it's loud the whole time, and sometimes you get a crowd that really oohs and ahs at, kind of at the right moments that help push things along. And it was just an incredible atmosphere that you all created here today. Go ahead, Ligon. Uh, just how important was it to get Kat some minutes today, and do you anticipate her having more on Tuesday? I think Kat, uh, just being back in the environment uh, in general is really important for this team, and, and also for her. She's been gone for so long, and, you know, quite a bit has changed. There's a lot of similarities. We have a lot of DNA. We have a lot of the same people, but there's also been, you know, a lot of shifts. So just getting back in and used to it, but also just developing chemistry with her teammates, being in the environment, training, uh, getting some minutes today here. 
uh, just really important, and uh, we're really happy with her. She has a good future. As you know, I don't generally talk about lineups, and I want to make it as difficult as possible for our next opponent, whoever it may be, so I'm not going to comment any further. In the back, go ahead. Is that Victor? Hey. Um, sorry, I'm back here. Um, from a, uh, how difficult is it from a per, uh, mentality perspective when you allow a goal in the 30 for whatever first 30 seconds of the match and you're playing from behind how difficult is that from mentality wise and then tactically wise um, from a tactical perspective uh, not much of a shift for us because it was so early in the game that it's not like the game really hadn't it's clearly started but uh, there wasn't there wasn't anything that we needed to adjust tactically. We felt we had a really strong game plan. We felt we had the right players on the field to execute that. And it was just about keeping our composure and our confidence and doing the next right thing. And I think they did a really, really good job with that. Was the other part of the question? Just, I, just what does it mean to the game tactically and mentally? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah from, a, from a mental standpoint, it's hard. Um, but I actually think this is something we've we've spent a lot of time talking in this group. These These women do this on their own, but... Um, we've spent a lot of talk, time talking about um, controlling the controllables and also that we, even when we do make adjustments, if we need to make an adjustment, we're still going to do it our way. We're still going to be us. And there are certain non-negotiables that we've set within our team in terms of how we're going to play, and we're just not going to vary from those things. So actually because we've spent so much time um, talking about that, because we've dealt with some hard things together and uh, especially some hard moments at Gold Cup, I think we know how to respond and um, I think they're first class at it at this point. Let's see if we can take a couple from Zoom. Jeff Kasouf, let's see if we can hear you. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Uh, I'm Twyla, you mentioned the, the high press and, and that being kind of in the DNA before and, and not necessarily game specific. I'm, I'm wondering when uh, within a game, and, and maybe this is more on the players than it is something you can sort of shout out within a game, but how do you balance the risk reward of knowing you're on that front foot, keeping the high press, keeping the you know the back line high, with knowing that you're leaving that space behind that maybe like in those you know 30 seconds could could be exploited? That is a very good question, and it's something that we go through in our what we call our what if scenarios. Um, so we have triggers that we follow that give us a clue. I'm not going to tell you what those are. <laughs> And we also have what if scenarios, if this is happening or this is happening and it's a little bit different or we need to regroup, what would we do? And that gives us a gauge of where we want to be on the pitch when we're defending. Um, and it's just, it's a really excellent question that you'd be, <laughs> that if you were in our coach's office, uh, we'd have a great conversation, but it's not the time or place for me to share those things. Jeff, you can come to the coach's office this year. <laughs> uh, last one for Twyla goes to Meg Linehan. Go ahead. We got to catch a flight. Was something up with her? Was there a, a reason for that change? But also, if you could just comment on her performance today in general. Yeah, Sam uh, is being evaluated for a head injury, so that was just a precautionary uh, substitute for us, just an abundance of care for her. I thought she was exceptional today. Um, I think her and Lindsay played really well together. I thought she moved the ball well for us. There was we had a lot of possession. We had some great football on the left side of the pitch. And then uh, I was like, you know, that's probably going to be our game, most of the game, just because of where we were finding a little bit of success. And But 68, 68th minute, 71st minute, like back to back, we had a couple progressions like right up the pipe. And it, it stemmed from her recognizing that they changed the way they were defending. Um, so where normally it might have made sense to have a bounce and then play it out wide for us to have a wide progression, she realized she needed to turn. And she turned under immense pressure. She did it twice, Cup, you know, allowed for a couple forward passes right up the pipe. And and actually, it was even if you look at the goal, I think that came from an early pass. Did that come from Sam as well? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, quick restart, two forward passes out to Soph, and then you know Soph does her deal and gets us a penalty kick. But uh, Sam Coffey has a lot to do with that and should be celebrated and praised for her performance today. I'm just going to throw one last one if you could speak to Sophia Smith's impact coming off the bench. Yeah, I mean, I, I she was just incredible off the bench today. And, uh, you know, she's 
She's a competitor. She's somebody that we would feel comfortable starting. Um, she, you know, those are just decisions we make on the day. I think I spoke about this before that, especially when you're going and preparing for an Olympic tournament, it's about starting players on the day and not like starters that every single one of them you wouldn't be there if you weren't confident that you would start them. But I thought she just went in and just made an, a tremendous impact. She did the, you know, defensive work first, which is not always a Ford's favorite thing to do, but took care of the defending took care of the attacking, understood the moment, knowing we needed to get you know in and behind. Um, just did a really great job, and she's a true pro. It's someone that uh, in my previous role I got to work with a lot as a in an individual development plan, and something I know about her is she, she wants to be the best at everything. She's willing to hold herself accountable. She's willing to work harder than anybody else she will compare as she's doing it. And uh, her future is just, there's even more for her, like, there's even more for her, and uh, I'm excited to watch how she continues to make her, you know, claim on the games.